Hi. <laughs> We all are. <laughs> So I want to talk about trust and everything you just said about scratching the surface. You've just scratched the surface of the vortex. And there's so much there. And I have this experience where in the past I used to work hard for things. And more recently I just stopped and went, I don't need to work hard, it's there. And I am in a place of trust, and I go to the void, and I trust, and I trust, and I work on trust. What do you mean by the void? The void is the place, for me, where there's all possibility. All right. It's a quiet place, but it's not a void. No, no, it's a, okay, it's a quiet place. But the void has a lot of energy, for me, the way I interpret it. Well, because it has a lot of momentum, because there's no resistance. Mm. Okay. So then I'm living in my life, and there's things that happen, and I think I need to be intentional to channel. I know. And then the voice inside me says, no, relax. Trust. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> and this is a very good point in the seminar to have this conversation. How do you know when to pour on the juice, which is what intentionality is? Being intentional is focusing. And focusing will increase momentum. So you just got to be wise about it. Don't increase momentum when you're focused upon something unwanted, but do increase momentum when you're focused upon something wanted. But most people think that being intentional just means focus on whatever it is. So they weigh the pros and the cons and the pluses and the minuses, and they think that's intentional because they're really trying to think through it. They're trying to think their way out of it. And that's when we say, you can't get there from there because you're contradicting this thought with this thought and this thought with this thought and this thought and this thought. So that's why you want to go to that quiet place where you stop that silliness. And when you go to that quiet place, then who you really are and what you really want and what the strongest vibrational current of you then can be realized by you. Mm -hmm. And I trust then that what comes then... Trust is an interesting thing because trust or faith, this is our definition of trust. It's easy to believe what you're looking at. It happened. There's a car in my garage. I believe that. There's a chair that I'm sitting on. I believe that. I'm using my physical senses to interpret things and I can see it. Therefore, I believe it. Wayne Dyer's book, Believe It and Then You'll See It, because most people are saying, I'll believe it when I see it. And he said, Believe it and then you'll see it. And so, and it's easy to see it and then believe it, but to believe it and then see it, that requires some trust. But we don't want you to trust for no reason. We want you to trust because you've got tools that are giving you reason to trust. We're asking you to trust that the manifestation will come because you can feel the clarity in the moment. We're not asking you to base your trust on nothing. We're asking you to align to the energy and feel it. It's easy to trust when you start being willing to let trust be applied to what you're ready to receive. If you say, well, I've wanted this car or I've wanted this mate or I've wanted this, whatever it is for all the time that I can remember and it hasn't come. So I no longer trust it. Well, we say, if you could not need to see it, if you could focus your mind and feel a little better and then receive an impulse and then follow through with it. This process will make a believer out of you. Our friend made a statement. I'm going to get called on. I'm going to get called on now. And then he got called on now. And those around him screamed with delight. <laughs> We say it's child's play. You can be at the place where you, you trust law of attraction. Law of attraction is You can see the evidence around you. You know the attitudes and moods of people and you see what's happening in their life. Isn't it obvious? Aren't you able to show yourself? There's not a shred of evidence to the contrary of what law of attraction is. And as you start paying attention to it, you don't need to trust. It's obvious everywhere. 
And when you're in a bad mood, that's when you lose something or forget something or stumble or pinch your finger in something or stub your toe on something. As Esther began with us all those years ago, when something wonderful would happen that she had intentionally focused upon, she would say, I did that. And when something not so wonderful would happen, she'd say, I did that too. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing when you start making the correlation between what you're thinking and how you're feeling and what's happening. That's how you develop trust. Trust and knowledge about the laws of the universe. Well, you can't really trust what others say because they don't necessarily even know what they mean. There are all kinds of people saying all kinds of words that don't mean what they're vibrating. People sometimes even get in this hot seat and they'll ask us something or they'll make a statement about themselves that just isn't true. They'll say it the way they want it to be, but it isn't the way that it currently is. And it's better to say it as you want it to be rather than it currently is really in terms of being optimistic, but you can't just be optimistic with your words. You've got to feel optimism. So if you're just using optimistic words or smiling at the right time or appearing to be cheerful and happy, you can't deceive law of attraction. Law of attraction does not understand sarcasm or irony. <laughs> law of attraction just responds to what you've got going. Well, after a little while, as you hear this enough and watch this enough, you come to trust that. So once you start meditating, and you feel an impulse and you know you did because your mind was quiet and blank and then an idea came you know you received it and if you had then the following of an emotional response to it which is just taking the thought and translating it further and then you followed the path of that and saw evidence of your idea that's how you come to believe that's how your trust which is faith in things not seen or not manifested can turn to things manifested. That was it. I want to make sure I just got what you said. So there was a word that you said earlier, clarity. And I know clarity is something that I have felt a lot of in my life. And I've helped a lot of other people find clarity. Delicious feeling, isn't it? it, it because is. think about clarity. Clarity is your emotional interpretation of the absence of resistance. So your thoughts aren't jumbled. You've got clarity. You're not saying, well, maybe this, maybe this, I like that. But then you're not in, in confusion. There's no clarity, which means there's no alignment in confusion either, but there's alignment in clarity. Clarity is the emotional indicator of alignment. Just like appreciation is the emotional indicator of alignment. Just like love is the emotional indicator of alignment. Okay. And when I go to my original question to you about trust, when I go to the place of meditation, when I've allowed myself to let go of the mental focus that I believe in the past has brought me clarity, it all seems so unclear. This is what you're looking for. What you're saying is I've thought my way to clarity. And you certainly can get into alignment and then follow a train of thought and you can think your way to clarity. But you can't think your way to clarity from confusion because the more you think, the more confusing it gets. Yeah, I don't want to do that. And so the sales job that we've been doing is quiet your mind, let it all ratchet down, and then focus there until the momentum becomes clarity. Because the first impulse, let's talk about this. Because you've been meditating, some of you a lot, so let's have this discussion with you. When Esther quiets her mind and comes into alignment with who we are. We offer every time the same words. We're extremely pleased that you're here. Are you knowing what you are wanting? As Esther comes into full vibrational focus with who we are. And then every time, have you noticed? She hits the ground running. She comes into almost instant and immediate clarity. But if Esther's got something that she's worried about and been working on or something's going wrong and she's trying to think her way out of it and she's saying, well, that didn't work and I don't know why that didn't work and that shouldn't have happened that way and maybe we should do something different. It just gets worse and worse and worse as she pokes around in it from that place of confusion. 
And so we're just saying that if we were standing in your physical shoes and anything really mattered, we'd meditate ourselves down to no thought would stay there until we start getting some inklings of alignment. And then we'd stay there long enough that we allow that early stage, which certainly isn't clarity, but it might feel like love turns into a faster momentum. So now we want to say to you that there's alignment with very little momentum, which feels like contentment or satisfaction and there's alignment with more momentum that feels like knock your socks off enthusiasm or passion and so we're talking about alignment that is sustained enough to allow the laws of the universe the law of attraction to respond to that vibration and what slows it down almost always always what always slows it down is a thought and then a contradicted thought and then a thought and a contradicted thought. You can hold yourself in a place of no motion for long periods of time. So what did you derive from that? For my personal interpretation yeah. of my current state yeah. is that... Which is going to be good because your current state is one of alignment. Mm -hmm. So we just want to hear back what you heard. What I took. What I took for me is that... Good words. The initial inspiration that I feel when I'm in meditation and allowing to come up that feels like it's not clear that if I stay with it longer it's not clear it just doesn't have as much momentum as you're used to yes exactly I'm used to momentum in a way that I have learned it and I'm now doing things differently and many of you are used to what you're calling momentum we're calling sprinkled with resistance and that's why you often would prefer a negative thought to no thought because you are misinterpreting the contradiction it's like this feels meatier because there's more going on there's more action involved in it yeah. but you'll get the hang of it in other words once you meditate yourself into this understanding of this and you allow yourself to receive it and apply it you've already elicited it by your contribution to your vortex you've already asked for it so you have elicited it but now you will allow yourself to experience the benefit of the leverage of the energy that creates worlds there's a leverage in alignment that is unspeakable a leverage in alignment that you can witness and often cannot find words to there's a cooperation in this alignment that is incomprehensible there is a structure and an order to things it brings order from chaos the chaos was necessary to create the desire and then the alignment brings order to it which is the clarity and the intentionality that you are describing mm -hmm. delicious thank you yeah.